I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Build Show Network, a continuation of last week's video where we talk about sheep's wool insulation. Let's do it now. Okay, so we are talking about 100% wool, and we don't mean mineral wool, we mean sheep's wool. So if you didn't watch last week's video, the short summation of that is it is wool. Kind of like the wool that you would have a sweater made from. And so it ships to us like, uh, like you see in the package, it's compact, it's very reminiscent of a fiberglass bundle or a cellulose bundle and we're gonna blow it in the walls much in the same way. There's just some different techniques. It's so compact when it ships that we have to fluff it a little and then uh, feed it into the hopper. And when I say hopper, I don't mean an insulation grinding and injection machine like you're used to with fiberglass, mineral wool, or cellulose. I mean a vacuum like you would use for removing insulation, loose fill insulation from an attic. So if you were gonna pop the roof on a bungalow and go up a floor, you'd have a subcontractor come and shop back basically all that insulation out. Well, this is the perfect use for that machine because this is so fibrous and strong that when this wraps around the grinding device in a cellulose style machine, it can actually cause the machine to bind. And uh, the guys from Havelock told me that it's actually a major pain, hours long possibly, to get that unbound. So they use, and they recommend you use, a vacuum running in reverse because there's only one propeller in there uh, to uh, you know, bind or stick or cause any issues, and it just doesn't because it's such a simple mechanism to get through there. So you have minimum of two crew members, you have a vacuum on site, you are fluffing it and getting it into the wall. Now, the thing that I thought was pretty interesting is we net the wall just like normal. You know, we're stapling onto the wall uh, with a T50 aero staple, their uh, preferred mesh. And this uh, mesh has a much larger aperture than uh, what you see from cellulose or fiberglass. And that's in part because this is a larger fiber. Uh, we don't have the, the same amount of small particulate and dust with this, actually the install process is a heck of a lot less dusty than say cellulose. Uh, obviously some of that depends on how well you've cleaned out your cavities or how clean your job site is. But with a larger aperture, aperture screen like that, we don't have stuff pushing through there. And actually we ran out of the, the screening and we used some mesh that uh, the hardware store sold for protecting trees from deer that had a fairly, uh, you know, an even bigger uh, hole in it. So. Entirely the same process for how quick you feed the machine is how fast you fill each bay. Uh, our, uh, our helpers from Havelock are literally just feeling and they, they have enough experience that they can understand what's happening in that cavity. But the interesting thing for you is you can do the math. They can tell you how much uh, cubic footage comes. I think it's 48 cubic feet in a 25 pound bag. Uh, so then your, or 48 square feet of a two by six wall. Uh, and so then you're able to just calculate, dish it out and go, okay, we gotta use all that up evenly in that space. So there's an easy math equation there uh, that you can use to check whether or not this is the correct amount of bat uh, or, or bounce to your hand. Uh, on our house, we are using the Havelock in the walls. We're using a uh, less or a more cost-effective product in the ceiling. But the only reason we're making a change is because our drywall lid is our air barrier. So this is inside our envelope. Everything above the ceiling is outside our envelope. So even when we have spray foam on this project in some of our low overhangs or uh, at, a, at a truss heel, it's outside the envelope. So if we ever had any air quality concern, that would be outside of the envelope. But here, we have a cleaner, healthier insulation in the walls and inside our environment where people are going to live and therefore breathe. With this wall assembly and the R value that's comparable to fiberglass or cellulose, with T-studs, we have that 
void that we're able to get insulation in and zip R9 on the outside, we have a roughly R33 wall. That is way better than code. That is, you know, close to 30% better than code in our market. And we have that continuous insulation on the outside. And then we have the cleanest thing we can put in the walls on the inside. So let us know what you think about it. I think the wool is a very interesting conversation. Like I said in the last video, I'm not sure it's right for every project, but there certainly are projects that totally warrant something that's not bothered by moisture, something that is a little less uh, of a possibility to have chemicals or allergens in it that might cause health issues in your house. Uh, we're looking at something that's really clean, really good for your family, really good for indoor air quality. So take a look at this and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching today. Don't forget Matt Reisinger, Steve Basic, Wade Paquin, and Brent Hull. They're putting up one video a piece every week on the Build Show Network. Sign up for the newsletter so that you get that Friday morning uh, email from the boss man, Matt, telling you these are the things that you missed this week. Go and check them out. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm Jake Bruton from the Hilltop Arrow House. Check out some sheep's wool insulation.